I'm going to demonstrate how to run a Monte Carlo simulation using the Santa Ana decision problem as an example. To follow along, you'll need the Santa Ana Excel sheet open, as well as both at risk and precision tree. You may want to pause the video now in order to get those things ready. Okay, there are two steps in setting up a simulation. One is entering the inputs, and the second is labeling the output. In the Santa Ana case, the inputs involve the uncertainty in search, development, and recovery. With regard to search, we're told that the costs could be as high as $10,000 or as low as $2,000 with all values in between equally likely. That implies a uniform distribution between minus $10,000 and minus $2,000. To enter that, first let's click into the box where we're going to put it. I'm going to put it into the search box cost. And then we go to the at risk menu and you enter out rather inputs by going to define distribution and we look for a uniform distribution here it is right here we click on that double click it there it is and the only thing we have to do to define the uniform distribution is enter the minimum and the maximum Keep in mind things are in negatives here, so minus 10,000 is the small number, minus 2,000 is the maximum. And the static value, notice that, that at risk is taken as a static value, the minus 6,000 that was originally in the box. You can leave that alone, that's just a placeholder. Hit OK. And when we do that, we get a risk uniform distribution um, in B4 that looks like this up here. Moving now to development, we're told that the cost could run from $4,000 to $20,000 with all values in between equally likely. So again, that implies a uniform distribution, this time between four and $20,000. So let's click into the box where we want the second input, which is in B6, and go back to at risk and define distributions again. And again, we're going to ask for a uniform distribution. You can also put select distribution in, like so. And, well, this time I hit the select distribution, and the default values it has aren't quite right, so I'm going to fix them. The small value in this case is going to be minus 20,000. That's the minimum. And the maximum is going to be minus 4,000. And again, at risk is chosen as its risk static minus 12,000. Again, that's just a placeholder until we turn the simulation on. So let's click. And that takes care of the development input. And then the third input has to do with recovery and that uh, small deviations from the best guess value of 75,000 are more likely than big ones. And deviations are equally likely positive or negative. Excuse me, that's the tip off that a normal distribution is uh, a good fit with, with what we know. So let's put that in. We'll go to at risk. And we define the distribution. This time we're going to be looking for a normal distribution. It's easy enough to find. There it is. Double click on it. And a normal comes up. And with a normal distribution, uh, you fill in, for parameters, you fill in the mean and the standard deviation. That defines the normal distribution, just as the min, minimum value and the maximum value defines a uniform distribution. And at risk has guessed that the best guess mean is $75,000. That's accurate. How about the standard deviation? 
Well, if you go back to what we're told, we're told the standard deviation is, is $25,000. So I will put that in, $25,000. Change that. And again, the static value, which is a placeholder, is set at $75,000. And we're good to go. Hit OK. Let's check to make sure that uh, what we think we put in, we did. We have a normal distribution with a mean of $75,000 in a standard deviation of $25,000. That's correct. So now that all of the inputs are in place. That takes care of the first step of setting up the simulation. The second step to setting up a simulation is simply identifying what you want the simulation to track as output. In this case, what we want to track is the expected value of the search outcome. That notice appears in two places. One is up here and uh, in red, and the other is down here where the actual decision between the search and not searching is, is taken. I'm going to take this up here uh, just simply because it more clearly and directly involves just the search decision. So we just want to simulate what the search decision is worth. We can always then go back and compare it to, to the commit uh, decision later on. So the way you mark it as output is you just simply click into the box, into E6 in this case, go up to at risk, and you click on add output. Now, for the purpose of the graphics that it's going to make and the, and the, the, the information the simulation is going to give you, you can give the output a name. We're going to, I'm going to call it the, the uh, value of search of search option, the search option, and hit OK. And that's all you have to do is give it that, that uh, label. Notice what it does in terms of the box. It leaves whatever was in the box before. This is the expected value calculator. And otherwise just puts this label in. So it says risk output and, and gives you the name of, of the label. And that's it. First thing we want to do is, is click out of the box we're in, OK. And then running the simulation requires you go up to the at risk menu and say how many iterations, that is how many scenarios do you want to draw in the simulation. And a good rule of thumb, uh, at least for our class, is to use a thousand. That'll be enough and it should run in a reasonable amount of time. Just go back up there and make sure it got it. Yep. It's got a thousand iterations. Now, the only other thing you've got to do in order to run the simulation is hit the start button. And I'm, I'm going to wait one moment to do that. I just want to say a word about what each iteration of the simulation will do. So each iteration of the simulation produces a scenario. In each of those scenarios, we get a draw, a luck of the draw, for search costs, development costs, and the amount that gets recovered. And it's going to take those three numbers and put them in the decision tree. Where do they appear? Well, the search cost appears here under the search branch. And the development cost and the amount recovered appear here up on the branch where, where we actually find the wreck. So after filling in all those numbers, the other thing it's going to do for the scenario is at risk will draw a yes or a no according to the probabilities we have, which is 50-50 here. And the number that will be recorded as output isn't going to be the average over a bunch of scenarios, but rather the actual value from that single scenario. And then at risk is going to do that process a thousand times. In the end, what you're going to have is a histogram that's looking at a thousand possibilities. Okay. So now let's go up and let's run the simulation. Hit the start button. I have it in demo mode, by the way, so that we can watch it run. That's not necessary, but it's kind of nice to watch. And what you're going to see here is you're seeing this drawing of various iterations. Sometimes you get a no, we don't find the wreck. Other times we do, and we get an outcome. And each one of those outcomes is being reported as a scenario over here. 